Thanks for tuning in to J-Cal's View. I'm J-Cal. This is a presentation of Alliance-Wrestling.com, your number one source for news and information for the National Wrestling 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 Alliance. It's been kind of a busy week. I mean, we've got an, a main event announced for the Prime Time Live, the United Wrestling Network's presentation and in cooperation in cooperation with the National Wrestling Alliance and Thunder Studios in Long Beach, California. We've got a main event. We've got Nick Aldis defending the 10 pounds of gold against Mike Bennett. This matchup is sure, sure to help kick off this next segment, this next era of the National Wrestling Alliance. You know, for for months, people speculated that the NWA was dead, but it is not. No, 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 it is not. But, you know, this week has got me thinking a lot about that 10 pounds of gold. When was the first time you saw Sweet Charlotte in person? When was the first time you saw the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship? I remember mine. Stay tuned after this commercial, and I'll tell you about my story. Uh, But I've been thinking a lot lately about my introduction to the National Wrestling Alliance. Now, you guys may or may not have heard me tell the story before when I was a kid. Uh, You know, we were one of the first families to get cable on the blocks. Now, I grew up in Southern California, and I didn't know then. I do know now that professional wrestling wasn't just the world wrestling entertainment it wasn't just the wwf at the time even in la we had a very strong indie promotion um one of the last strongholds of uh the old bygone era the nwa los angeles or grand olympic wrestling whatever you want to call it wrestling from the grand olympic auditorium uh that stuck around until about 82 uh 83 now, of course, I was I was just a little guy. You know, I, I didn't know what wrestling really was. In fact, when I started thinking about wrestling and remember watching it regularly, it was probably around Saturday night's main event leading up to WrestleMania 2. Uh, later, we'd go and watch WrestleMania uh, on VHS, and I think we received I think we ordered every WrestleMania from like two to about thirteen. And uh, I was really consistent, uh, uh, a WrestleMania family, like something that we uh, yearly did, uh, annual tradition. And so my exposure to the NWA was limited. I didn't really start getting into the NWA until we got cable, which was, I don't know, probably around 86 or 87. So they had already retired the 10 pounds of gold. We, we, uh, our AWA Remco figures had that belt. I mean, those were from 85, 86, but they had that toy 10 pounds of gold. Um, but by the time I was really getting into WCW or at the time, the Jim Crockett promotions, NWA wrestling, they were using the 10 pounds of gold already. They still had the Arn still had the television title. Uh, Barry still had the, the U S championship. But I mean, at that point, the 10 pounds of gold was phased away. And I plan to do something more on this later, but um, the NWA, the first time I saw that title again was like in, I guess it was like 98, 99, when uh, UFC started around, I guess that was 97. And I remember watching the Octagon, watching... Dan Severin, who I was a high school wrestler, so seeing a guy who was emulating or wrestling in a style that I I used in high school, um, and, you know, I did a few Greco-Roman tournaments, so seeing Dan Severin using the same moves that I did, you know, double leg takedowns to the ground and pound, or you know, the suplexes, I mean, I really got into it, and seeing Dan the B Severin there with a 10 pounds of gold, uh, take it easy wrestling with the MMA. Uh, seeing Severn with the gold was a, was a big deal to me. And so that was the first time I saw the 10 pounds of gold up close. Well, not up close, I guess. I should, I'm should. i going to get to the up close in a minute. But that's the first time I saw that, that title, that the historic championship belt that meant so much um, to the NWA was with Dan Severn in the octagon. It wouldn't be until about... 
I guess 2001, when I was at UPW's Ultimate Pro Wrestling. Uh, Ultimate Pro Wrestling was that that was Rick Bassman's uh, wrestling promotion here in Southern California. Uh, Dave Marquez talked about it on on my podcast, and um, UPW was kind of uh, where a lot of the wrestlers broke out to the next level. So, you know, Samoa Joe was a former UPW World Champion, but he would you know that's where he kind of started establishing his name before it was just mostly indies that was before he got to ring of honor um that was that that uh, middle period where he was wrestling in zero one uh they were also the promotion of course that was known for discovering uh john cena you know and here's where the list goes guys who you know kind of spent some time in the wwe horseshoe luther reigns uh nathan jones of course, Frankie Kazarian, Christopher Daniels, the aforementioned Samoa Joe. Um, they would bring in talent from the WWE. So, uh, in fact, the show that got us, got me to the first one was with the Hardy Boys, with Lita. But they also brought in Edge and Christian. Um, they brought in um, some of the talents from ECW, like Chris Chetty and uh, Amish Roadkill. Uh, they brought in the outsiders. They brought in LOD. Like it was such a, an eclectic group of wrestlers. Um, a lot of the guys that you see now in the uh, championship wrestling from Hollywood or championship wrestling from Arizona, guys like Hawaiian Lion, the Navajo Warrior. Um, who else? I mean, I saw RVD there. Um, the Blue Meanie. I mean, it was really wild. Like some of the talents that we saw. And that little place. Uh, But, you know, Rick Bassman was not only looking to get his guys in the WWE, but he's trying to get his talent in Japan. And they forged a working relationship with Zero One Wrestling, specifically Shinya Hashimoto, who was at the time the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. In fact, there was a, a title that they designed that was created in Southern California that is still part of Zero One's uh, Junior Heavyweight Championship. It was it was supposed to be an international Junior Heavyweight title that covered UPW, the NWA, Zero One, and kind of all points in between. Um, it was like uh, it was going to be, uh, I think, the title that was supposed to launch Brian Kendrick into Zero One. Um, but that was, you know, that was something else completely. Uh, before that, we had talents from Zero One kind of invade UPW. Specifically, Hashimoto showed up. Hashimoto showed up as a heel holding the 10 pounds of gold and basically made a mockery of the talents of UPW. Now, UPW's main guy was Tom Howard. Tom Howard uh, wrestled in AAA as KGB and some of the independents early in Southern California as KGB or Zuma, the surfer. Um, but he was a very accomplished professional wrestler, um, was head trainer for UPW, but he was also a bit of an MMA fighter, had limited success wrestling for pride and wrestling, uh, fighting in Japan. Uh, but he was the main guy, but everyone knew Samoa Joe was the most talented guy. And they were trying to forge this relationship between Zero One and um, UPW. So that was the first time I was there live to see the 10 pounds of gold in person. Now, I didn't get to talk to Hashimoto. I certainly didn't get to go take a photo with him or anything like that. Uh, But it was the first time I saw that 10 pounds of gold live and in color. And, uh, you know, that that night, I mean, I, I went home and I started researching the NWA. Um, found out about Carino, found out about, obviously, Severn, and put everything together, how Severn held the title, lost it to Ogawa, Ogawa forfeited the belt, and then Rapata had it, and Rapata lost it to, to Sabu, back to Rapata, back to Carino, and, and, and you know, Gary Steele's somewhere in that mix as well. Um, but that was the first time I got to see the title in person. The second time I saw the NWA World's title was when... AJ Styles was wrestling in Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Now, he had brought the, the uh, X Division title multiple times out here, but it was kind of cool to see the 10 pounds of gold when he brought it out. 
So that's the first time I ever saw the NWA title. 